Sisters to win game two without two of their three top scorers. So uh, LeBron and the Cavs are underdogs at home. They're also underdogs to win the entire series. But consider this, they've been able to win without Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Just consider that for just one moment, Skip Bayless. So here's the question. If, in fact, they're not able to win, does LeBron deserve a pass if he loses the finals without either two of them? And I'll give it to you first, Stephen A. Smith. Does LeBron what? Deserve a pass if he loses the finals let me, let me without those this. two guys. You know, and I say this, I've said this repeatedly. No Kevin Love, no Kyrie Irving. If he plays like garbage, it does not matter. He still will not get a pass. But when you're averaging 41 and a half with 12 rebounds and 8 and a half assists, that ain't gone. So that subject is officially null and void. Obviously, two and four on your resume in an NBA Finals is not a good record. And we understand that. But considering the mountains that he had to climb to get to this point, you can't say enough about the job that LeBron James has done. Not just for this franchise, but for this city, for Northeast Ohio. I mean, it's been sensational. Nothing short of it. Again, if he was playing like trash, that would be a different ball game because, then, because you look at him and you say, listen, your level of greatness requires a certain level of performance. But he's living up to that. And I mean, listen, we're sitting here debating about LeBron James in terms of, oh, he could do a little bit more because he's shooting 40%, less than 40% for the field. That's really all we can say about him. Can't say anything about his defense. Can't say anything about his leadership. Can't say anything about his willingness to produce and show up. Overall, you see the numbers that he's putting up, knowing what he's, he's up against. LeBron James is in the finals with Timothy Moskov, <laughs> Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, <laughs> Amon Shumpert, mm -hmm. and I'm Matthew Della Vadova. Well, yeah. well, well, well. Go on. You, go on. It's that, not that about. Pretty it's good. Not, you, you have to understand something. You can say you like it, but I would, I would ask rhetorically, did you like it as much when Amon and J.R. was with Melo? No. So all I'm saying is you're not knocking them because you know that they can play. But there's something to be said about the greatness of LeBron when we consider the fact that these guys are in the finals. We're not talking, nobody's saying that Amon and JR and them can't play. Mm -mm. Forget that. They're in the finals. They are three wins away from a world championship. No matter what you think, no matter what you think wow. about about no matter how great you think, because I think Jr. is a much better guy than has been projected and been perceived. I've always been a fan of Amon Shepard. You know that as an elite I perimeter defender. You know how I felt about them in New York. But I never thought finals until they got to mm -hmm. with LeBron. Okay. Let's keep that in right, mind. That's fair. Before I answer this question, I, I'm going to say something to you from my heart. And I've said this already many times on this show. The job that LeBron James is doing with this team coaching it and teaching it and leading it is spectacular it's all-time great seriously from my heart okay. in, in in some ways intangibly he should be the mvp okay I'm, I'm with you okay now back to this question we had a very interesting question on this morning's show at the end of Kerry's court. Do you remember this one about should there be an asterisk oh, yeah, sure. attached to this? If Golden State wins and there's obviously no Kyrie and no Kevin Love, should, should it be an asterisk of a finals? And I told you in my answer, nationally, I think people will attach an asterisk. Not in the Bay Area. They're going to celebrate like crazy because it's their first since 1975. Right. But, but then you came on top of me and you said no. You said you got to go with what you got. And if what you got is what you got, you, you, there's no asterisk, right? That's right. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back around on you. If there's no asterisk, then there's no pass mm. for LeBron James, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. He is playing this underdog role to the Academy Award hilt. He's saying now, hey, no team could compete the way we do if they lost two All-Stars. Sure. Well, you know what? They could if heaven opened and you replace those two all-stars 
with Tristan Thompson, who has emerged as a force in this league and in this finals? Am I right about that? He is a force. You're even talking about he should get max money. Am I right about that? Well, max money well, in but, today's but, NBA. Okay, well, I mean, whatever. good lord. But, but you're saying he's turned into a star. He is dominating the offensive glass and the defensive end. And whatever you want to say about Little Delhi, you called him a premier defender. All of a sudden, Kyrie, who does not defend because it's just not yet in his heart to defend the way Delhi defends, when, when you lose him, all of a sudden you gain Delhi on Steph. And he is a Steph stopper. I don't care what you say. And guess what else you do? Guess what else? Thank you. Hang on one second. What else you gain is LeBron James, who I always call the best point guard in basketball, is suddenly, quote unquote, relegated to playing the point for this team. I love this team with him at the point. And guess what? I love this team defensively with Tristan and Delhi because all of a sudden the Cleveland Cavaliers turn more into the Cleveland Browns defense. And your, your, your Browns do have a hard-nosed defense. Hey, listen. I'm serious. My point is, I still say, as crazy as this sounds, no Kevin Love and no Kyrie. I like this team in a matchup with Golden State a little bit better with these two guys in this lineup because it's just mentally well, tougher, it's physically tougher, and it's it's a turning into a defensive juggernaut right now before your very eyes. Well, allow me to retort. First of all, number one. I don't necessarily like them without Kevin Love and Kyrie because what you keep missing is that bodies matter. There is a legitimate well, beef. There's the a depth. legitimate beef mm -hmm. that the Cleveland Cavaliers could lose these finals simply due to lack of bodies and fatigue wearing in because of the six to seven guys you have to play instead of the nine you would be able to play if Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving were healthy. Number one. Number two, sometimes your best defense is a prolific offense, which you would definitely have if Kyrie and Kevin Love sure. were available Absolutely. because they no could question. definitely put the ball in the hole. So we got to take it. We got to pay a, a consideration to that. But when you talk about LeBron James in terms of you know a, a pass or whatever, you're going to reverse it to me. Remember when I talked about the the asterisk and how it doesn't apply that it it doesn't apply to the winner because the winner it's irrelevant. In the end, you got the chip. You ain't going to give it back, and you ain't going to apologize for mm -hmm. taking advantage of somebody's deficiencies. But when you lose and you have an opportunity mm -hmm. to reflect on why a team lost, we're going to look at it and say, you know something? This might have something to do with it. Case in point, 2008, the Boston Celtics romped Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles mm -hmm. Lakers in Game 6 of that NBA Finals. They beat them by 39 points. Well, mm -hmm. Andrew Bynum had not been healthy throughout that series. He's healthy mm -hmm. two years later. What happens? The Lakers win the chip. Also, I believe, I, I'm not sure whether it was Kendrick Perkins. I forgot who it was, but I think it was Perkins or somebody that wasn't really available for you for that game seven. That was a lot counting against it. Even though he was just Kendrick Perkins and he was an offensive player, he was a big, bruising body that you needed so you could take some of the pressure off of KG, Kevin Garnett in that NBA Finals. Bodies matter. Deficiencies mm -hmm. matter. And so as a result of it, even though you won't sit there and put an asterisk next to a, a team that won the championship, mm -hmm. as you reflect upon it, in hindsight, you're going to recognize Recognize the people that people didn't have available to them. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm the Cleveland Cavaliers, or if I'm any Cleveland Cavaliers fan, don't tell me that if LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers loses these finals, that two months from now, two weeks from now, two days from now, or a year down the road or whatever, we're not sitting there saying to ourselves, damn, he didn't have Kyrie. He didn't have Kevin Love. All This is all he had. You're going to remember that, especially if he continues averaging near 40. Because if he's averaging near 40, all right, you're going to sit there and look at him and go like this. He did his job. Okay, but time out. Time out. I can't let you get away with that. And this is what bothers me because the, the LeBron apologists are already out in force saying, well, he doesn't have Kyrie and there's no depth. And I agree with you on the depth point. They could get worn down, although LeBron James is the ultimate Iron Man. I don't think he'll get worn down. Maybe the rest of the he team will. He got worn will. down in game one. He did not. In the overtime, he was tired. Oh, please. Yes, he said, was. Now you're giving him a pass. It's the facts. 
It's not it's the, the fact. fact. Come on. Go back and watch okay, the but, tape. But look, I mean, what, look eating... what happened. You, you're saying, they got to the <laughs> with Tristan Thompson and J.R. Smith. And I'm saying, you know what? LeBron James had a last shot at uh, Oracle the, 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 Arena to win there. the game. Well, so let me get this straight. We can't win call the you, game. Just so people can't call you a hater. But if we defend LeBron, we're apologists. Which one is it? How come Everybody you calls your, me you, a hater. You got your cake and eat it, too? The fact of the matter is, the fact, don't, call me don't look at them. I'm yes, talking to you. Don't look at them. I'm right here. The point is. Is, is that what LeBron James? Hold on, wait a minute. LeBron James. LeBron what are you James. you talking about? Played, he played 50 minutes in Game Two. He played more than 44 minutes in Game One. That overtime, everybody and their grandmama said he ran out of gas. He jacked up not 38 shots. Not my grandmama. Shot. He got, he got, <laughs> no, no, probably your grandmama, just not you. Yeah. But the point is, he jacked up 38 shots. That mm -hmm. wasn't him. That's not the way he's accustomed to play. He got him in position to win Game but, One. But the point that I'm trying to make—that's not the question. Yes, it the, is. The issue is, is that was he or was he not tired? Everybody who was watching the game outside of Skip Bayless uh, thought he was tired. Tired? In the overtime. In the overtime. Yes. Yeah, but, but all I care about is you have the basketball in your it hands in a tie game with the clock running down at the toughest place look, to look, win look. in the NBA. And, and, and I'm telling Are you, you and, I, and I'm sitting there saying to you, which one is it? Okay. The man's a two-time champion. He's a four-time league MVP, and you can sit there and chronicle when he does something wrong. Well, well, wait, but if he sits there and gets his team to the finals, <laughs> well, which he has done wrong. with this squad, wait, wait, wait. and you're going to just ignore oh, wait, wait. Kyrie and oh, wait, 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 wait. Go. Oh, Are we going to ignore game two? When he had another shot to win the game at the end of game two, a little left-handed layup that he left short, and then he had three more chances in overtime. Wait, wait, three wait, more wait, chances. Time out, time out, time out, time out. Time out. Hmm. I see, and this is where you and I, he and I, inherently disagree on this point. Skip Bayless, if he's making every shot until that moment, and then he misses those three, you have a point. The man missed 17 of his last 21 shots. Long before those three shots in the final minute came along, he was missing. You okay. didn't say anything then. Okay, but he didn't say anything in then. the fourth quarter in overtime, LeBron James went two for 12 in game two. And, and guess who saved his bacon? Delhi. Delhi saved his bacon. Delhi. Okay. Right? He did. All right. He took him off the listen, hook. Listen, okay. listen, listen, listen. Right. Y'all, yeah, inter wrap. interrupting a brother ain't helping him. Yeah. Okay? The Make fact it, is, I liked it. Because we got to get you. out. Too much trouble, please. Thank you. I appreciate All it. All right, this so listen. Time. We talked about does he deserve a pass without uh, Kyrie and Kevin Love. Clearly, the gentlemen uh, disagree. When we come back, we're going to talk about his motive. Motivation. LeBron said a lot of folks counted them out after they found out Kyrie is not going to be able to finish the series. What's his secret motivation when we return? First take on the road for the NBA Finals. We're in the flat, having a good time. Be back in just a few moments. Excited to be here. We're wrapping up our special game show with the Cleveland fans talking about none other than the King. LeBron James has been carrying the load for the Cavaliers the first two games. He scored 83 of their 195 points over the first two games. He had 44 points in game one, 39 in game two. So we're talking about how the Warriors defend LeBron James. We're going to ask you to put your coaching cap on, Skip Bayless. Yep. Do you believe that Golden State should change the way they've been defending? Build this game in Cleveland tonight, or as you, you folks have been calling it, Believe Land. I mm -hmm. like that. Gold, thank you. Golden State has to figure out a way to push the pace, to up the RPM of this game into their kind of game. And the only way I know how to do this is to start trapping LeBron James at three-quarter court or half court. I'm not talking about doubling LeBron James. I'm talking about trapping him quickly, and because he always makes the correct basketball play, get him to give up the basketball and hope it ends quickly in the hands of one of his snipers, JR, James Jones, whoever it is, Shumpert, and that they decide to shoot it more quickly than they usually would. Now, if JR gets hot, it's good night, Golden State. Okay? But, but to me, if, if you keep, if you keep let, letting LeBron James walk the ball up the floor, walk into the offense, walk somebody down into the low post, and score a basket at the end of the shot clock, that is a recipe for two to one Cavaliers. And that's what, okay? You gotta switch that. Can't, you can't let it happen anymore. Well, what you said is not wrong. 
but your reasons for it may be. What you want to do is try to exhaust LeBron because when he walks the ball up the court, what you're doing is enabling him to get rest while the action is taking place I'll buy that. because he's catching himself a deep breath while he's just walking the ball mm -hmm. up the court instead of being pressured. But I think the other adjustment on top of what you pointed out was I think that Steve Kerr can't be scared to stay big. In other words, if you got Andrew Bogut in the game, he's only averaging three points, but he's averaging eight and a half rebounds. Keep him in the game and make sure it helps limit Cleveland to one shot mm -hmm. because if you have you limit them to one shot you limit their offensive possessions yep, You I force agree. Cleveland to play more on defense and as a result that will help neutralize LeBron as well Part of the reason LeBron is is being so damaging is because Tristan Thompson is averaging 14 and a half rebounds mm -hmm. a game He's giving them more possessions And so if you take away those possessions then obviously that's another way to neutralize LeBron So I don't think it's really about doubling him even though I don't have a problem with that strategy, but I think you have to limit Cleveland to one shot. You have to make sure that you match their size mm -hmm. and their girth down low so they don't get multiple chances at the apple. And I think if you go about doing that, then there's nothing wrong with letting LeBron do his thing because LeBron is shooting less than 40% from the field. So it's not like Golden State's defense is horrific. It's that their offense isn't going. It's more important for them to get their offense going than to improve their defense. Their mm -hmm. defense hasn't been awful. It's just that their offense has been awful, and Cleveland has had too many bites at the apple, mm -hmm. and that's what their problem is. Yeah, I, I like your point because the oddity of game two to me was that Mozgov, who has yeah. been a godsend for this team, go? he, he, well, hang on. He, he played zero in the yeah. fourth quarter and zero in overtime. How, how did they get away with that? Well, Bogut wasn't in the game. Well, that's why Moskov wasn't mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah. Because Kerr took Bogut mm -hmm. out to go small, and Cleveland had to match going I'm small. With you. But when he's in the game, you just got to make sure Moskov doesn't outplay Bogut. All right, game three, just a few hours away. We're going to recap picks on the other side of the break. Thank you so much, Cleveland. We'll be right back. But your take, the Twitter results say that Cleveland will win. Did they yeah. get it right? I, I want to say that, in, in a shock to me, this crowd has been even better than our morning I, crowd. It's, it's crazy. unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 30 I, seconds. I, I truly love the city of Cleveland, but yeah. I got to stick with my pick. I got Golden State tonight, 100. <laughs> LeBron's going to do his thing, but either J.R. or Iman Shumpert will come alive offensively. Cleveland will win the night, 99-91. Well, there you have it. The game is tonight on ABC. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at the Flats. Join us if you can. First take on the road for the finals. <laughs>